Hola, comrades. Today's topic of interest, Twilight Princess. When this game first came out, I wasn't as enthused about it as the rest of the fandom. That's probably because I was a kid and wasn't yet tempted by the misconception that dark and gritty equals good, which is why a lot of fans were salivating over it. Ever since the release of the GameCube, Zelda lovers were thirsty for a more realistic interpretation of their favorite franchise, and they were furious when they instead got The Wind Waker, which went in the opposite direction. Time has restored Wind Waker's reputation, and it's now considered one of the top-tier Zelda games, whereas Twilight Princess, despite being received with a flood of praise upon its release, has seen its star dim substantially. It was everything the fans said they wanted, but soon they realized that they were not satisfied. As is usually the case, the people didn't know what they wanted. When Twilight Princess is discussed nowadays, it's usually as a footnote at best. The same complaints are leveraged at it. That its world is too boring, too empty. That it's no fun at all. But last year, I replayed it all the way through and found that I actually liked it a lot more than I did as a kid. It feels weird now, being on the side defending Twilight Princess, but I'm up for the task. Despite its reputation as the Zelda game that went too dark, Twilight Princess uses that darkness to craft some gorgeous areas that don't fall into the cliché of brown and boring. The landscapes in the twilight sections of the game are haunting, and Snow Peak feels skeletal and blanched. Twilight Princess showcases my favorite ever versions of both Gerudo Desert and of the Temple of Time. But while I'm using this essay to talk about how Twilight Princess is not too dark, I'd rather not focus on the physical landscapes of the game, but rather on the story. Specifically, one moment in the story, the most heartwarming moment in the Zelda series, when you return the horse call to Ilya and she gets her memories back. <laughs> That revelation is beautiful. Though her character isn't as developed as much as, say, Midna, I really like Ilya. She's not a doormat, but she's sweet and loving, the kind of person who will put themselves on the line to care for someone in need. Even after she loses her memories, she takes care of the young Zora Prince Rallis after he becomes seriously sick, not relenting even after Dr. Borville turns her away. What I like most about Ilya is how well you get to know her before the adventure starts. Twilight Princess has an unusually long run-up to the actual adventure, which some criticize, but I actually like, as it gives you more of a chance to get to know the people in your town. It's easy to establish pre-existing relationships between your characters, factually, but it's a feat to make you feel like you're living in those relationships. It's hard for a game to involve you in the protagonist's life when that protagonist is silent, but Twilight Princess manages. Link has no parents, but he has father figures and kids who look up to him, and he has this one girl, Ilya, whom he's known for a long time and kinda sorta has a budding romance with. If Link and Ilya were left to their own devices, you can see them getting married and having a nice family together. This incarnation of Link is probably my favorite in the series because he doesn't have this great destiny. He's not waking up from a hundred years sleep, and he's not different from the other people of his village. This is the least exceptional version of Link, but it's also, not coincidentally, the most real and defined. He has a distinct role in this little rural society, and then he's pulled right out of it. 
You could conceivably envision a scenario in which this Link never leaves Ordon Village. That doesn't mean he's not as compassionate or morally upstanding as the other Links. Quite the opposite. Ilya praises how he's always been there for her as she begins to recover her memory and the background fades to white. Then they're back in the Ordon Spring. She remembers him there and she remembers the moments they've shared together. The camera rotates, and we get close-ups of their faces before the camera mounts skyward. transported back to reality. He's as overjoyed that she remembers as she is. The spring is the last place they saw each other before adventure came to them. As Link worked his way throughout the land, Ilya had her own trials and tribulations. In the series, it's not uncommon for Link's pseudo-love interest to be involved in the story later down the line. They usually have some latent power or responsibility. Saria in Ocarina was a sage, and Zelda in Skyward Sword was the goddess Hylia. Ilya, conversely, is just a girl who got dragged into this mess, but that doesn't mean she's not making the most of her circumstances, just like you, the player, are. Twilight Princess is not too dark, but it is one of the darker Zelda games. While not as fatalistic as Link's Awakening or as macabre as Majora's Mask, it is bleak, so to have the opportunity to restore the memories of someone you care deeply for someone who, like you, has been caught in a less-than-advantageous situation and has tried to make the most of it. It's like seeing the lambent light of a candle in the deepest darkness of the night. And listen to that music. This is called Ilya's Memory Restored, and it is my favorite variation on Ilya's theme, which plays several times throughout the game. This is its most triumphant iteration, adding a decisive layer of finality to Ilya's story. There's something warmly nostalgic about it, suggesting that with Ilya's memory restored, she's now with you in spirit for the remainder of your adventure, and you're no longer so disconnected from the comfort and serenity of your hometown. Link and Ilya continued looking into each other's eyes, and both the kids and the adults leave, giving these two the moment alone they deserve, even if Talo has to be pulled away. Whenever I get to this moment, I always wish it would last forever. It's just so immensely satisfying, but it does end, and Ilya reveals that the charm you use to restore her memory is the horse call she made for Link, and she gives it to you. From a gameplay perspective, this is handy because it means you can call a Pona from anywhere. But from a story perspective, this is invaluable because it's a piece of Ilya that's yours to have and to hold. Not only is she with you in spirit, she's with you in the form of this call. Before you return it to her, it's known to you, the player, as Ilya's charm, and that name sums it up. It has a practical function, but it's also a good luck charm given to you by someone who cares about you. Kind of like the sailcloth from Skyward Sword. Ilya says just one last thing to you. She's confident that you'll succeed, and that last line, I'll be waiting for you, is an affirmation of the bond they share. That bond may have been broken before, but it's been reforged, and it's here to stay. The Ilya storyline didn't need to be a significant part of this game, but I'm glad it is. It transforms what otherwise could have been a cold game into an emotionally wrenching experience. Any game can send you on a quest. The best games get you to care about that quest, and no moment in Twilight Princess made me care more than restoring Ilya's memories. I will never get tired of The Legend of Zelda, and I will never get tired of making videos about it. For the record, this 40 second clip of music is my second favorite piece in the game, behind only Midna's Lament, which is the greatest song in the entire Zelda universe and I will hear no words of the contrary. 
They pack a lot of emotion into 40 seconds of music, but then again, they also pack a lot of emotion into the scene in general. It's a mere fragment of your lengthy adventure, and yet it's so powerful. Anyway, if you liked what you saw today, consider donating to my Patreon so I can produce even more amazing content. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that harmonic stuff. Adios, comrade!